Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today, we're diving into Intel's brand new Core Ultra CPUs. Now, since the CPU information was actually embargoed until today, you can likely soon watch hours of detailed coverage and benchmarks all over YouTube. But in the next five or so minutes, I'm going to tell you just the need to know on the new Intel Core 200 Ultra series. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the name change. Gone are the days of the i3, the i5, the i7, and the i9. Intel switching things up with the Core Ultra branding. The numbers are now 245K, 265K, and 285K, which might seem a bit cleaner, but it's still a bit of a reset that we'll all need to get used to. And to keep it familiar, the S still stands for desktop. And remember that U means laptops and X means workstations. I mean, the marketing almost writes itself. As for release dates and pricing, these chips are set to launch on October 24th, with prices ranging from around 294 to 590. Now, depending on your retailer, you might see a bit of fluctuation, but that's the ballpark. The top tier Ultra 9 285K will be the most expensive at $590, while the Ultra 5 245K will start at $294. One of the big headline features Intel is pushing with these new processors is their power efficiency. They're claiming up to 58% lower power usage on lightly threaded workloads compared to the Raptor Lake refresh. That's a pretty significant improvement, especially when you consider that gaming and multi-threaded performance has stayed mostly the same, if not gotten slightly better than before. So it's not just about raw performance though. Intel has put a lot of emphasis on reducing power and temperature while maintaining that same high-end performance. The Core Ultra 9 285K, for example, runs at a max clock speed of 5.7 GHz with a max turbo power of 250 watts. If you compare that to the older 14900K, which could hit 6 GHz, this is a bit slower on paper, but the architecture underneath it should make up for it. What Intel is really banking on here is efficiency. The idea that they're now achieving the same performance at half the power. We'll have to wait for some formal testing to see how that pans out in the real world, but uh, the claim is there. Now, the mid-range Ultra 7 265K has 8 performance cores and 12 efficiency cores, and no hyper-threading, with a max boost of 5.5 GHz. Again, this chip focuses on delivering solid performance without guzzling power, much like the 14700K that it's really replacing. And then there's the entry-level Ultra 5 245K, which packs six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, and it clocks in at 5.2 GHz. That makes it a good option for anybody looking to balance cost and performance. Now, here's something new for the desktop CPUs. Intel is introducing a Neural Processing Unit, or NPU. This is a dedicated engine for handling AI-related workloads like matrix multiplication and convolution tasks. Certain AI-heavy applications will run more efficiently on these chips. It's an interesting addition, though again, we'll have to wait to see how well it gets used in real-world scenarios. A big part of Intel's push for this generation is improving per-core power control, thanks to digital linear voltage regulators that adjust the power used by each core more precisely. They claim this should significantly improve performance per watt, especially in tasks like gaming. Speaking of gaming, Intel's new flagship Ultra 9 285K is touted as achieving parity with the 14900K and AMD's 7950X in terms of frames per second across a wide mix of games. It's not a giant leap forward in gaming performance, but Intel says it's a cooler gaming CPU. And no, they don't mean it's got more Riz. They just mean that the temperatures are lower and that's part of the story. Now, the platform changes are just as significant. Memory support has been upgraded to DDR5-6400, and you can now run up to 192 gigabytes of RAM if you've got a motherboard that can handle it. DIMM size is maxed at 48 gigabytes per stick. Intel also ruled out support for ECC memory correction and the new KM memory standard, which improves clock stability at higher speeds. Connectivity gets a bump too. There are now 48 PCIe lanes total, with 20 of them being Gen 5, and so you've got... Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 6E, and Bluetooth 5.3 built in. And there are optional upgrades to Wi-Fi 7 and Thunderbolt 5 if you really want to future-proof. And here's something fun for the overclockers out there. Intel has revamped the overclocking controls, allowing for finer adjustments to core clocks along with better control of the interconnect fabric clock. They've even mentioned possibly hitting 5 GHz on the E-cores with some of the more extreme setups. The new architecture is definitely more flexible in that regard, but as always, the real performance gains will come down to how well you can actually cool the chips. And in terms of cooling, Intel introduced a new retention mechanism for the higher-end motherboards, which applies 35 pounds of force to improve pin-to-pad contact. It's a pretty niche detail for extreme overclockers, but it could make the difference when pushing DDR5 memory beyond 9GHz. 
So to sum it up, Intel's core Ultra CPUs are shaping up to be an interesting combination of power efficiency and AI optimization with just enough raw performance to keep them competitive with everything else. So whether you're looking for a gaming rig or something for productivity, it seems that Intel is putting a lot of effort into making these chips as versatile and future-proof as possible. So I think we'll have to call this release for what it really is. Fundamental proof that Intel has been able to completely re-architect their CPUs without going backwards in performance. They've achieved parity with the 14900K using a design featuring a lot more power, thermal, and electrical headroom, meaning that things can only get better from here. And there you have it, the latest on Intel's Core Ultra 200 series. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives on the latest tech. Check out our weekly shop talk on the Dave's Attic channel for the best answers to viewer questions. So in the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Do it, Glenn! Do it, do it! <laughs>